Hey girls, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing some Kira Sky products and doing the first fall themed manicure of this year. So here we have a package from Kira Sky Nails. I am an ambassador for them, so they did send this over. I did pick out all of these items myself. This is about $200 worth of products. Kira Sky is also sponsoring this video, so I want to go ahead and thank Kira Sky for that. If you guys are interested in any of the products that I'm showing or using in this video, everything will be linked down below along with my discount code, which is KC Nails. That will save you 10% off of your Kira Sky purchase. So I do always like snatch out the little shipping paper so you guys don't see my address, but this is what the box looks like once you open it up. As always, Kira Sky has the best packaging. It is so cute, it is so much pink, and they put a lot of effort into their packaging. So let's go ahead and get right into the products. I do want to go ahead and let you know that almost all of the products that I picked for the month of July are browns and nudes. I was so over all of the bright vivid colors so I wanted a little bit of a break from that. The first items that I'm showing are the rhinestones, so we have Whiskey Business and Sugar Rush. I'm going to go ahead and take out all of the boxes and I'll just open that up once I move the bigger box just because it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to see everything that I'm showing you. So going back, I'm just doing a little bit of a closer look at those rhinestone collections. These are absolutely gorgeous. Personally, I like Whiskey Business a little bit better than Sugar Rush, but I do want a good variety of rhinestones that match different sets of nails. Next, we have this little pink box. Again, a super cute packaging. I love how Kira Sky put so much effort into their packaging. Inside this box, we have three dip powder colors. This first one here is called Naughty List. This is a light brown dip powder color. Next, again, is another dip powder color, and this is called Warm and Toasty. This is a very similar color, but it is a little bit more pink toned. And the last dip powder color that I got is called Treasure the Night. Next, we have the exact same size box, and inside this one, we have three sprinkle on glitters. This first one here is called Zero Fox Given. It's a pretty orange glitter mix. The next one is like a super vibrant orange glitter. And this one is called I Lava You. <laughs> I love the names that Kira Sky has for their products. And the last glitter is a darker like bronze type of glitter. And this is called Bruja. This is the one that I use in today's video. You guys probably seen the box already, so you know what this is, but I did get the 100% pure acetone. This is to remove the artificial nails like dip powder, acrylic, and gels and all that. So I got this because I was out of my acetone, so I needed to get some more, so I figured I would try out Kira Sky's acetone. And last but not least, I have this bigger white box. Inside this, we have some more powders. I did get another dip powder color. I got a lot of dip powders for the month of July, so this one is called Unbearable. It's another brown. Next we have a all-in-one acrylic powder. This is a two ounce jar. This one is called Glistening Snow. Next we have another all-in-one acrylic, and this one is called Shirley Temple. This is one of their cover acrylics. Next is another all-in-one acrylic. This is called Rose Water. And the last all-in-one acrylic that I got is called Inner Glow. All of the all-in-one acrylics that I got are from the Cover Acrylic Collection from Kira Sky. So that is everything that I received in my July package from Kira Sky Nails. I'm super excited to do some brown nails. So let's jump right into the swatching of these products. So here I have some stiletto nail swatches. I got these on Amazon. Again, everything is going to be linked down below. I am going to be using the dip base, which is number two, to swatch out all of these products. This first one here is called Rose Water. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love the sound of opening their all-in-one acrylic jars. The next one we have here is called Shirley Temple.
Next, we have Inner Glow. This is a really pretty nude that does have little fine glitter in it and I am obsessed with this color. It is absolutely gorgeous. The last one is called Glistening Snow and again, this one has the same fine glitter in it as the previous acrylic. As you guys probably know, their all-in-one acrylic powders can be used as acrylic dip or you can use them to sprinkle over as nail art. I personally like to use them most as dip powder. To swatch these colors out, I'm just applying a thin layer of the dip base to the inside of the nail swatch. I'm going to go ahead and dip that into the powder and tap away the excess. After the first layer has been applied and is dry, I'm taking a fluffy brush to remove the excess powder from the swatches. I'm going to repeat the same step for a second layer to get the best color coverage for all of these colors. So after doing those two layers, these are those acrylics swatched as dip powder. These colors are absolutely gorgeous. I'm obsessed with the two on the left. Let's go ahead and swatch the dip powders now. The first one I'm opening is called Naughty List. Next, we have Warm and Toasty. Next is Unbearable. And last but not least, we have Treasure the Night. Again, I am just repeating the exact same process to swatch out these dip powder colors. So here are the four dip powder color swatch. These are so gorgeous. I'm so excited for brown nails. And of course, we're going to be swatching these sprinkle on glitters. This first one here is called Bruja. Next is called Zero Fox Given. And last but not least, we have I Lava You. So to swatch out the sprinkle on glitters, I am just applying the dip base to the top of the nail swatch and I'm going to go ahead and dip that into the glitter. Personally, I don't like to swatch the sprinkle on glitters on the inside of the swatch just because it does take away from how the glitter looks. If you guys don't know, sprinkle on glitter does not have any acrylic or any types of powder in it. It is just like pure glitter. So if you do want to apply this to your nails, make sure you have a good structure for your base before applying the glitter. So here are the swatches of the sprinkle on glitters. These are absolutely gorgeous. I'm not always the biggest fan of glitter because it's like super messy. So here are the swatches of all of the products that I received for the month of July. These are so pretty and I can't wait to do the manicure with these. I feel like all of the colors go together so well, so let's move on to the next part of this video. So this part of the video is a little bit sidetracked from like the rest of the video, but I never film this type of stuff anymore, so I figured I would just still include it in this video. I am going to be using my lavender nail drill from Kira Sky. I am still obsessed with it. If you guys want to know more about this nail drill, I will link my review video in the cards as well as the description. I am going to be removing the jelly tips that I'm wearing in this part of the video. To remove most of the product, I am going to be using the purple 5-in-1 drill bit. This drill bit is really unique because the tip portion is like fine grit and the bottom portion of the drill bit is like coarse. So it can remove product really quickly, but it's also very good around your cuticle areas. So these are what the jelly tips look like. These are the medium square, I believe, but I did cut down some of the length. I did apply some gel polishes and stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these nails before we do the manicure. I'm going to be using a speed of about 8,000 RPM to remove the gel. After removing most of the product, you want to go ahead and clip down the length of the nails. 
I do have this finger tray and I'm going to be using this to remove the nails. This bottom part does detach from the tray portion and you can place hot water in this which can speed up the process of removal. I'm not going to do that for this video but I have done that quite often in the past. I am taking the Kira Sky 100% Pure Acetone to pour into the finger tray and we're going to go ahead and place the nails inside of the tray. So once you've placed your fingers inside of the tray, you want to wait about 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, you can remove your nails. It should look something like this. It just depends on the product that you're using. Again, I did have jelly tips on. So you're going to take a cuticle butcher and just scrape off the product that has melted off from the acetone. If you have any additional products stuck to your nails after the first soak, you want to do another 5 to 10 minutes. Just check it periodically to see if you need to soak longer. You just want to repeat the same process until you don't have any product left on your natural nails. You'll then just want to take a buffer. This is Kira Sky's 8080 grit, I believe, buffers. I'm just going to go ahead and lightly buff the surface of the nails. And that is basically how you remove jelly tips. So it's like a few weeks later. I still don't have anything on my nails, but I did already go ahead and prep them. So I pushed back my cuticles and I filed the shine away from my natural nails. So now we're ready for the nail prep of this manicure. I have already done the basic nail prep, so I've pushed back my cuticles. I have filed the shine from the nails, and I did remove any of the dead skin from around my cuticles. So now we're ready for the manicure. Personally, when I do dip outer nails, I skip doing bond, and I typically apply the prep and primer from the jelly tip kit. I know some people say that you don't need primer when you're doing dip powder nails, but I still usually apply it. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply these to the nails to complete the prep for the manicure. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply these to the nails to finish off the prep for the manicure. If you experience a lot of lifting, you can apply two layers of primer and that should fix your lifting issue, but for this one, I am just applying one layer of primer. I am going to be applying the C Curved Coffin XXL Nail Tips from Kira Sky. I did a video on these quite a while back. I haven't actually used them in quite a few videos, so I figured I would go ahead and use them again for this manicure. When you're sizing out your nail tips, you do want to make sure it goes from sidewall to sidewall. You don't want to have any gaps on the sides of your nails with your nail tips. I am going to be using the Stick It Nail Glue to apply the nail tips. So here are the nail tips once they're all glued into place. I wish I could do nails this length, but I got kids you guys, I can't do that. <laughs> I am going to be using my nail tip cutters to cut down some of the length. So I don't really include this in my videos that often, but this is like the initial length that I cut all of the nails to. I don't know if you can tell, but they are super uneven. I did use the measuring ones. I did want them to be a little bit longer and it just made the nails like super uneven. So when I'm cutting the length of the nails, I personally like the pinky nail to be the same length as all of the other nails. I have heard some nail techs say that the pinky doesn't have to be the same length as all of the other ones. But even if the pinky nail turns out to be longer than all of the other ones, I just want all of the lengths to be exactly the same. So I just line up the cuticles of the nails and I go ahead and measure based off of the pinky. The length of the nails does not have to be perfectly exact because we are going to be filing them after the application. So as long as they're basically the same length, it is fine with me. So I really liked these four colors together. So these are the colors that I'm going to be using for this manicure. I don't know about you guys, but I'm so over all of the vibrant colors and I want some brown. I'm so ready for fall and winter nails. Like you guys would not believe how ready I am for brown and neutral colors. So yeah, this is what we're going to be using for this manicure. 
So funny story, but not really funny. Um, I accidentally glued this one shut somehow with either acetone or nail glue. And my dad actually had to like use tools to open this. So just ignore the jar. <laughs> I will be using Zip Base to apply the powder to the nails. This diamond from my Dappen dish just to prop up my finger. So let's get started with the application. I will be using the color Naughty List for the pinky and the ring finger. I'm just starting by applying the dip base a little bit before where the nail tip meets the nail bed. I do a thin strip of base and then I'm going to dip into the dip powder. That is the first layer of many for this manicure. Because I am doing a talk through, I'm not doing a voiceover at the moment. I'm not exactly sure how many layers we're going to be doing for this nail set yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be around five or six. I am also last minute deciding to use this color for my thumb, so I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same process for my thumb as well. Do make sure to remove the excess powder before doing the next layer of powder to avoid ruining your dip liquids. And for the second layer, we're going to be applying the dip base to a larger area of the nail than the previous layer of dip powder. Doing this is going to very gradually build up the layers of powder and give you more strength and structure for your nails. For typical color coverage of dip powder, you want to do like two or maybe three layers of dip powder. But because these nails are quite long, we are doing quite a few layers of powder to make sure I have a good structure to prevent the nails from breaking. Guys, I am running out of my dip base, so I don't quite have enough to like apply a thick layer to get the right coverage. So if you see like areas like this on my nail that just doesn't catch the powder when I dip, that is the reason why. I'm also really hoping that I have enough dip base to do this set of nails because I am getting a little bit worried at this point. <laughs> For the index nail, we are going to be using the color Inner Glow. Again, I'm just doing the exact same steps to apply the dip powder to this nail as well. So I don't really know if I've told you guys yet already, but I am doing a freestyle brown set. I basically have ideas for all of the nails, but honestly, for the index nail, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be doing a dip powder ombre scrub and I kind of hope I can do the ombre scrub with the darker brown color but looking at how contrasting the color inner glow and the dark brown color are I'm not really sure if they'll end up ombreing that well together so I may end up ombreing with the lighter brown I'm not really sure yet that is just the current thought process that I have so yeah for the middle fingernail, we are going to be using the color Treasure the Night. This color is really pretty. It's actually my substitute color for brownie points. I haven't been able to get my hands on that color yet. So this is my substitute for that color. Again, we are just repeating the same steps for this nail as well. The next step is to take the Seal Protect, which is number three, and apply this very generously to all of the nails. Seal Protect is going to harden all of the layers of dip powder and allow you to properly shape and file the nails. You definitely do not want to skip this step with your dip powder application. I'm going to go ahead and take my 100-100 grit hand file and start reshaping the nails. I'm also going to use this to file the surface of the nail as well. 
As usual, I am going to be skipping the filing and shaping process because it is very time consuming. So here are the nails after they've all been filed and shaped. The thumbnail is absolutely crazy, just ignore that, I do fix it later on. The next step is to take the Kira Sky Seal Protect and apply another layer to the nails. The second layer of Seal Protect is just going to make sure that all of the layers are fully dry. I am going to be doing a textured glitter nail, so I'm taking the Sprinkle On Glitter. This is called Bruja. I thought this color was absolutely gorgeous, so I wanted to include it in this manicure. I am going to be using my Kira Sky Lavender LED Nail Lamp to cure all of the gels. To apply the textured glitter to the nail, I am going to be taking the non-wipe top coat and I'm going to be applying a thin, even coat to the entire pinky nail. I am taking one of the trays from the Hero Sky Recycling System and I'm going to scoop up some of the glitter and go ahead and pour that into the uncured gel. You do want to make sure to get all of the sides of the nail very well. You don't want to have any areas of the nail without glitter. After making sure the entire nail is covered, I am going to tap away the excess glitter and go ahead and clean around the cuticles. You can also wipe the sides of the nail to make sure it doesn't look too bulky. I'm going to go ahead and cure that layer for 60 seconds. Next, I am taking negative space and white canvas. These are gel art liners. For the ring bare nail, we are going to be doing a Burberry nail art design. For this, it's basically like plaid. So I'm just starting by drawing a thick white line down the side of the nail. I am trying to make this line as straight as possible. Keep in mind when you're doing these white lines, you do want to make them quite thick because we have to do three lines of black, one on each side and one in the middle. So you want to have enough room to make sure you can see all of those lines. I'm then going to do a white horizontal line, kind of more towards the cuticle, but somewhat close to the middle of the nail. You do want this line to be a little bit lower than the middle. Again, you do want to try to keep the thickness the same as the previous white line. You do want to go ahead and cure that layer for a full 60 seconds to make sure you're not going to ruin the nail art. Next, I am taking negative space and I'm making sure to remove all of the excess polish from the brush. For these black lines, we do need them to be pretty thin and precise, so you do want to make sure not to have too much polish on the brush. I'm just starting by drawing a straight line of black down the center of the white line. Making sure your hand is steady is really important with this type of nail art. You do want your lines to be very straight. I feel like working with these liner brushes is fairly easy, but you do need to stabilize your hand pretty well to make sure that your lines are straight. And I am going to go ahead and repeat the exact same thing for the horizontal line as well. These lines will be intersecting, so do keep that in mind. You don't want to have too much polish on your brush, otherwise it is going to ruin all of the lines and like blend them all together. By the time I finished almost all of the lines, I realized that some of the gel was starting to blend into those little cracks from filing and shaping. And because of that, I remembered that I did not apply my matte gel top coat before doing this nail art. So if you do want to do nail art over top of freshly buffed nails, do make sure to apply a matte gel top coat and cure before doing your nail art. I feel like the lines bleeding wasn't that bad, so I just went ahead and did a full cure under the nail lamp. I am going back with the white gel liner and I'm going to do a thin line on the opposite side of the previous white lines. Again, for this line, you do want it to be pretty thin. And I'm also going to do a thin white line at the tip of the nail as well. I'm not sure what I was thinking, but I also forgot to do a glossy top coat over top of the previous lines that we did. I am going to be doing a textured glitter for these lines that I'm currently working on. So ideally, you would want to apply your top coat before doing these lines. So before I cure that under the nail lamp, I am taking the same glitter that I used for the pinky and I'm pouring that into the uncured gel. Basically, wherever the gel is, is where the glitter is going to adhere. I did go ahead and do a full cure under the nail lamp. Now I am going back with the non-wipe top coat and I'm going to top coat the nail because I did want the glitter to be textured. I am not applying the top coat over top of that. At this point is when I noticed that I did not apply the top coat before doing the sugared glitter.
once I've applied the top coat, I did go ahead and do a full cure under the nail lamp. I do have some rubbing alcohol in my dappen dish. I'm going to be doing some 3D flowers, so I have my poly gel brush and a very fine dotting tool. So I just dipped the dotting tool in the rubbing alcohol and I'm going to pick up a very small amount of some white poly gel. You can do 3D flowers with acrylic, but I do really like to do 3D poly gel flowers. So once I've placed the bead of poly gel on the nail, I am going to take the poly gel brush, dip it in the rubbing alcohol, making sure to remove all of the excess alcohol from the brush. And I'm going to go ahead and start forming the flower. I am doing the same style of 3D flower that I did in the previous Kira Sky nail set. As I said in that video, I really love this style of flower, although I do want to try some other types of 3D flowers. The thing about doing 3D flowers with poly gel is you do have to make sure that your poly gel is not runny, otherwise it's going to be impossible to form your 3D flowers. You do also want to make sure not to put too much rubbing alcohol, otherwise the poly gel is going to become a little bit more runny. Because poly gel is a gel that does eventually start to self-level, you will need to cure all of the flower petals individually, at least do like a flash cure. Honestly, that doesn't bother me too much, but just keep that in mind. I did take a slightly smaller bead of poly gel and I'm placing that beside the previous flower petal. This flower petal is going to be a very small round one. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch the rest of the flower application. I'm basically repeating the exact same steps for the rest of the flower petals. So I do feel like the theme of these nails is a little bit too early, like I know we're at the very end of August already. I feel like it's not quite time for fall nails yet, like summer has gone by a little bit too quickly. But I have started seeing some nail content creators that I follow reposting their Halloween nail designs from last year and I'm like, girl, we cannot be skipping fall themed nails and going straight into Halloween, like we gotta have some browns and nudes and more neutral colors first. So I figured I would go ahead and do a fall theme nail set for you guys. So taking the Whiskey Business rhinestones, I am going to pour a few of them out on the table. I am going to be applying the rhinestones with the Bling It On Rhinestone Gel. This is a really thick gel that holds the rhinestones on the nail very well. I'm just applying a little bit of this in between all of the flower petals. Taking my rhinestone picker, I am picking up a pretty big rhinestone and I'm placing that in the center of all of the flower petals. I feel like it still had room for more rhinestones around the bigger ones, so I'm taking the Sugar Rush rhinestones and I'm pouring these out on the table as well. I am picking all of the very tiny rhinestones and I'm going to be placing these around the bigger rhinestone. I did manage to make all of these rhinestones fit in between those flower petals. I know some people do the rhinestones first and then they do the flower petals around it, but personally I just like to do it this way. I did go ahead and cure that for 60 seconds. Going back with the non-white top coat gel, I'm going to go ahead and top coat all around the flower. Personally, I don't like when 3D flowers are top coated, so I am just making sure not to get any top coat on the flower. I did go ahead and cure that under the nail lamp. I am going back with the base coat gel and I'm going to apply a thin layer to the index nail. I am going to be doing some nail art. Originally, I had planned to do an ombre scrub, but that was not working out for this nail set. So instead of doing the ombre, I did wipe away the sticky layer after I cured the base coat layer. And I'm going to be doing some gel nail art. Taking the gel art liner called Oh My Gotti, I'm going to use this for the nail art. For this nail, I am doing a V-tip, but I'm doing an outlined V-tip. To do this, I did a small dot in the center of the free edge, and I'm going back towards the cuticle area, and I'm picking a point to start the V-tip. I just did a thin line all the way down to the center of the nail, and then I'm going to outline the edges of the nail. Taking the white gel liner again, I'm going to complete the other side of the V-tip. 
After the V-tip nail art has been cured, I am going back with the top coat and I'm going to go ahead and top coat the nail and cure for a full minute. So I did get this nail piercing kit off of Amazon. I've been wanting to do nail piercings for a while now and I've seen a set recently that I'm planning to recreate and it does have nail piercings in it so I figured I would go ahead and get this kit. This does come with some really pretty pink pliers. It does have this container of different rings. You have different sizes and colors. It also comes with a bigger ring to like bend those tinier rings and has some tweezers and the manual drill to put a hole in your nail. So to open the drill, you just start twisting the handle and you are able to remove the handle piece from the drill. So a lot happened in between the clips of me opening up the piercing kit and me piercing the nail just now. I did already pierce the nail and then I realized how bad the nail looked so I went ahead and filed off most of the dip powder from my nail and I redid more layers of dip powder so I can have a solid color nail. So I did go back through the same hole that I previously did on the nail. That is why I'm going from the back side. Basically you just put a lot of pressure and twist it and it does drill a hole in the nail. Even though this nail is pretty thick with dip powder, I did not struggle at all trying to put a hole in the nail. I did just pick the second from the smallest size of these little rings and I held the bag up to the nails to see which color would look best. I did end up picking the gold one. This kit does come with this little ring thing with little like slits in it. Basically you slide in part of the little ring and you turn it and it actually bends the little ring so you can place it on your nail. I thought this was really unique and I'm glad that they included it. I'm just going to go ahead and slide the ring in the hole that I've drilled into the nail. Taking the pliers, I'm just going to go ahead and close up the ring. And here is what the nail piercing looks like. It is super cute. I love it. You can move it up and down. It is a really nice fidget toy, honestly. <laughs> so once I have the ring in place, I am going to go ahead and apply the non-wipe top coat, making sure not to get any of the gel on the ring. I will admit the first attempt of me piercing the nail, I did already have the top coat on. And once I drilled a hole, it did make the top coat look really weird. So if you are planning to do this, I would recommend to apply the top coat after you place the ring. Once I've applied the top coat, I did go ahead and cure. Last but not least, I am taking the cuticle oil. This is the lavender scent. I haven't used this one in a while, but I really love how this one smells. I'm just applying this to all of the cuticles and I'm going to massage it in. And here are the nails. I think these are so cute. Let me know what you think of this nail set down below in the comments. I am so obsessed with the nail piercing. I move it like constantly now. I do think that you guys are going to start seeing me doing nail piercings more often. Again, if you are interested in any of the products, everything will be linked down below. Do make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you're not already, do make sure to hit subscribe because I do post weekly videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!